I'm Madeleine Freisenberg, presenting Basic Principles of Biological Sample Preparation for Scan Electron Microscope. Part of the Electron Microscope Unit Central Analytical Facility, Stellenbosch University. Why is sample preparation important? Conventional SEMS operate at very high vacuums to avoid gas molecules interfering with primary and secondary backscattered electrons emitted from the sample. Everything going into the SEM must be completely dry and free of organic contaminants that may potentially outgas in a high vacuum environment. This poses a problem when dealing with biological samples, which are largely composed of water. To retain the native structure of an organism requires additional preparation steps. These steps are necessary depending on the type of sample and the purpose of the study. Some types of biological sample, for instance insects with hard exoskeletons and woody plant material, will require less stringent processing to preserve their structure. Whereby the more delicate types of samples will take more time and care to prepare. Why is sample preparation important for EM? Sample preparation are essential because flawed samples preparation can undermine the quality of results and lead to false conclusion. It is necessary to avoid the introduction of drying artifacts like sinkage and collapsing. Artifacts can be undesirable things to be avoided if they do comply with preconception. It is important to compare images obtained by different technical methods, for example, transmission electron microscope with the light microscope or scanning electron microscope. And under different conditions from which we can subtract artifacts which we have been able to distinguish, no single step during the preparation of biological material for viewing can be regarded as independent of each other. An analysis of each separate step is necessary for some tentative understanding of its contribution to the final result. Let's so look at the picture of Bacillus serious cells in sample A or image A were washed with distilled water and oven dried at 40 degrees. The cells are flattened, shrunken, and covered with dried mucus layer. In image B, we see that the bacillus serious cells were air dried using HMDS protocol. The cells appear rounded, well exposed dividing cells. Primary consideration in sample preparation for SEM. Obtaining acceptable image with good ultrastructure preservation requires careful application of the SEM sample preparation method making an effort to do some research and preparation prior to collecting the samples. Consider journal articles in which authors prepare the same or similar type of samples for SEM. Always use a sharp blade to avoid deformation. Make sure you know the best fixative to use and that you have prepared and ready to go when you collect your samples. Transfer your samples immediately into the fixative to halt any cellular changes in the organism after you harvest or kill them, to avoid autolysis, putrefaction, and drying artifacts. Aim to collect and fix something that is small as possible to ensure good infiltration of the fixative into the sample. You will need to dissect an area of interest of your sample prior to fixation. Once the sample has been placed in a vial with primary fixative, the sample vial should be used throughout the sample preparation protocol. Do a pilot study using one or two samples to determine the correct sample preparation for your type of sample. Fixing agents. There are different types of reagents that can be used as fix to fix tissues, like formaldehyde, by far the most popular reagent used for histopathological and glutaraldehyde widely used for ultrastructure studies requiring electron microscope. Formaldehyde is the only gaseous aldehyde and is dissolved in water to saturation at 37 to 40%. Paraformaldehyde, a highly polymerized form of formaldehyde, may be deposited as a white precipitate in concentrated formaldehyde solutions. To prevent this, 
Small quantities of methanol, up to 15%, are commonly added to proprietary patented or branded solutions. Unbuffered formalin will slowly oxidize to form formic acid, resulting in a fall in pH. Formic acid will react with hemoglobin, forming an acid formalite, formaldehyde hematin, a brown black granular artifact. A pigment is deposited in the blood rich tissues. This pigment is a nuisance as it can be confused with microorganisms or other pathological pigments. Formaldehyde reacts most effectively at about a neutral pH. 10% formalin solutions are usually buffered to pH of 6.8 to 7.2. In sample A, we see sample from a culture. Fixative must be added directly into culture plates. Fresh microbial cultures gave better results. Don't leave cultures in the refrigerator for long periods of time. Glutahaldehyde, another fixative is one regarded as the bifunctional aldehyde, possessing aldehyde groups at either end of the molecules which have the potential to react with same chemical groups as formaldehyde. Tissue fixed in glutahaldehyde will be more extensively cross-linked than tissues fixed in formalin and will also pose some unreacted aldehyde groups that, unless chemically blocked, can cause background staining in methods such as PASS. The extensive cross-linking adversely affects the immunohistochemical staining but does provide excellent ultrastructural preservation which explains its extensive use as a primary fixative for electron microscopy. Cross-linking reactions of glutohydride are largely irreversible. Glutohydride penetrates very slowly and it is recommended that tissues be less than one millimeter in thickness in at least one dimension. Glutohaldehyde can be added to a suitable buffer at a pH of 7.2 to 7.4, usually cacodylide, to produce a 3% glutohaldehyde concentration for use. For electron microscopy, glutohaldehyde primary fixation is commonly followed by a secondary fixation in osmium tetroxide. Factors that will influence the rate and effectiveness of a sample fixation. First, temperature. Increasing the temperature of fixation will increase the rate of diffusion of the fixative into the tissue and speed up the rate of chemical reaction between the fixative and the tissue elements. It can also potentially increase the rate of tissue degradation in unfixed areas of the specimen. It is believed that fixation at 0 to 4 degrees reduces the possibility of the extraction of cytoplasmic elements from cells. Secondly, time. The optimal time for fixation will vary between fixatives. For fixation to occur, the fix fixative has to penetrate by diffusion to the center of the specimen and then sufficient Time has to be allowed for the reaction of fixation to occur. Both diffusion time reaction time depends on the particular reagent used and the optimum time will vary from fixative to fixative. Another factor is specimen dimension. A specimen should not be more than 4 mm thick. Ideally, a 3 mm thick slice should provide excellent fixation and processing. It is useful to remember that the specimen cavity in a standard processing cassette is 5 mm deep. Volume ratio. It is important to have an excess volume of fixative in relation to the total volume of the tissue because with additive fixatives, the effective concentration of the agents is depleted as fixation proceeds and is and in a small total volume, this could have an effect on fixation quality. A fixative tissue ratio of 20 to 1 is considered the lowest acceptable ratio, but I would recommend a target ratio of 50 to 1. The next factor is your penetration rate. 
The penetration rate of a fiction agent depends on the fusion characteristics and it varies from agent to agent. Osmolality generally is the osmolality of a vehicle that is most important and in some formulation this is adjusted to resemble that of tissue fluid, example formalin, in isotonic silane. Before fixation occurs, cells can certainly be damaged by non-isotomic fluids, such as water, and if specimens cannot be immediately fixed, they can be kept moist with a gauze soak in isotonic siding for a short period of time. It is not advisable to hold tissues immersed in siding for extended periods. For marine samples, osmolality is achieved by using seawater instead of buffers. Hypertonic solutions give rise to cell shrinkage, while hypotonic solutions result in a cell swelling and poor fixation. pH and buffers does not appear to affect the quality of preservation greatly as a number of formulations have quite a low pH, such as those containing acetic or pyric acid. However, pH can be important for other reasons as in case of formaldehyde solutions where breakdown of formaldehyde to form formic acid produces an acidic solution, which in return reacts with hemoglobin to produce an artifact pigment. The most popular formaldehyde solution today is therefore buffered with a pH of 6.8 to 7.2 for this reason. In our picture, you see that fresh water and marine water samples like diatoms can be fixed in routine fixatives. However, marine samples, the fixatives should be prepared in filtered or artificial seawater with its osmolality matching their natural environment. Samples with heavy mucus films obstruct the clarity of the ultrastructure. Mucus layers can be removed by washing of the sample with suitable silent before fixation. In the image A and B, we see the removal of the mucus layer in these intestinal parasites. Avoid stress in samples. Small organisms like worms, water insects, zooplankton tend to show some form of stress or even struggle when emerged into the fixative. These stresses effects may result in change or loss of ultrastructural components of the sample. It is advisable to narcosize or slow down the organism before fixation. Leave the sample in the fridge for about 5 to 8 degrees for a short period of time before fixation or immerse the sample in magnesium chloride solution or dilute alcohol before fixation. In the image we can see a mite that has collapsed during the sample preparation protocol. Samples the samples must need the size that can fit into a chamber. The sample must be dry. You can either use a critical dryer or freeze drying or drying the agent like HMDX. It's important that the sample is conductive, so you can use the sputter coat and coat your sample with a heavy metal, for example with gold, gold palladium, platinum, iridium for high resolution images or carbon for qualitative analysis. Sample preparation methods. There's different types of methods how to prepare the sample. So the sample can be transferred into a small uh, multi-wall plate, microporous capsules, or custom-made chamber. Continue to fix with paraformaldehyde and glutaraldehyde. Never allow a sample to air dry. Samples should remain submerged in fixative. Keep cold at 4 degrees, left in fixative for longer than an hour. Sample collection, getting started. Collection of samples for same preparation in a laboratory involves the dissection of an animal or incision of a plant material to remove tissue from the main body. All incisions must be performed with press blades to avoid deformation of tissues from the undue physical forces needed with a blunt blade. Use the same valve throughout the protocol. Simply decan or pipette out the changes to minimize handling. Never freeze specimens. Fix specimens in aldehydes, for example, 4% formaldehyde and 2% glutaraldehyde, 
to cross-link proteins and keep them cold at a 4 degree temperature for prolonged times until post-fixation and further processing for stem analysis can happen. Post-fixation with osmium tetroxide. Osmium tetroxide fixes lipids and therefore stabilizes membranes and alters structural features. Osmium provides conductivity under the scanning electron microscope. Osmium is a heavy metal that enhances the contrast, therefore provides a stronger electron signal and can be obtained with soft biological material containing mainly carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen companies. Dehydration step. Dehydration is done in graded series of ethanol to remove water gradually and gently, typically with percentages starting from 30%, 50, 70, 90, 100%, with 10 to 15 minutes in each concentration step. Repeat the final 100% ethanol step to make sure that all residual water has been removed. Final drying process. Final drying after 100% ethanol can be done in various ways. By number one, you can try with critical point drying option with liquid CO2 in the critical dry air apparatus. Or you can use the chemical drying option with HMDS or freeze drying option under the vacuum using nuclear nitrogen. Now I present a flow chart of air drying A with HMDS and critical drying liquid with liquid CO2. And critical drying with liquid CO2 sample preparation method. Both methods are known to be equally effective in ensuring good preservation of the structural integrity by minimizing or eliminating the impact of surface tension effects in the sample. Sample mounting and conductive coating. Mount dried samples on aluminium sand stuff using a brush or thin needles. The sand stuff is covered by conductive carbon tape or carbon paint or electro bag. Sputter coat the sample to enhance conductivity, typically with gold or gold palladium, or any other metal or carbon. Biological samples being non-conductive give rise to charging problems in the cell, as the bulk of primary electrons from the electron beam remain in the sample to form clouds of negative charges. This charge buildup interferes with the primary beam to bring about image distortions, loss of contrast, with very bright and dark areas, known as charging effect. To overcome these problems, a thin layer of metal is sputtered on the sample, thereby increasing the conductance on the sample to enable the absorbed electrons to find their way to ground. A sputter coater is used for this purpose. The referred metal for sputter coat are gold, gold palladium, platinum and chromium. However, Platinum and chromium are the choice metal for high resolution images, more than 50,000 magnification, as gold sputter results in the visible graininess on the surface of the sample. Particular samples are dry powders, fine crystals, nanoparticles, dry bacterial cells, and spores, and they do not need any special sample preparation protocols. Care must be taken to avoid loosely stacking one over the other. Particles must be firmly stuck on the specimen stuff. Stacking of particles causes instability and charging problems. You can follow the following procedure. Sprinkle a little of the sample evenly but lightly on the stem stuff with double-sided carbon tape. Use a hand blower to blow away the loose particles. Always blow away from yourself into a bin or sink. Employ increased safety procedures if the particles are known to be harmful. The sample is now ready for viewing in the sink. Sputter with either gold, platinum or chromium. There's different options how to load the sample in the chamber. Firstly, you get a chamber loading zone that you don't break the vacuum in the big chamber or you have sims like the evil sim where we have to break the chamber vacuum and flush the chamber with nitrogen to load the sample. Getting started by using SAF EM unit, we can see our contact details and we're looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much.